another element in here is the Joey Glure debacle, scandal, whatever that's happened in the past few months. As I understand it, uh, Bishop Barron hired this young man. His name is Joseph Glure. Many years ago, he had no background in uh, video production. media production. Right. Uh, he is a bodybuilder. And there's a lot of pictures of him on the internet with his shirt off, flexing. The COO is Father Steve. Is it Gruno? I think that's right, yeah. Father Steve Gruno. He's also with his shirt off as a priest, flexing. There's another guy, Jared Zimmer. Uh, their shirts off, flexing, showing their muscles. And this kind of, for years now, people have been saying, why are these bodybuilder guys? And if you go to a Bishop Barron event, you see all these jack bodybuilder guys around Bishop Barron, and then people are raising questions, what's going on here? And then kind of their leader, Joey Gluer, who was the production right-hand man. Actually, you can see him on the screen here with Bishop Barron in the studio. He's sort of a tattooed up uh, buff guy. Um, he was let go because of a sexual misconduct. We're on fire is known for trying to, what they would call engage the culture. And I think what some critics would call be like the culture a little mm -hmm. too much. And I think traditionally Catholics have always understood that it's not just a matter of not sinning. You don't want to give the appearance of sin. You don't want to give the appearance of anything untoward to the public as much as you can, especially if you're a public figure, a bishop, a priest, something like that. And so I do think these were some they, they sent some wrong signals at the very least out. And then, of course, so the most recent thing was is that somebody noticed that all of a sudden Joey Glore, who was in on their website, had been tweeted about social media all over the place. All of a sudden, he just completely disappeared. Like there was no announcement made. But it wasn't just that he wasn't working there anymore. It's like they went back and they did the Stalin move of just taking him away from all their previous. They, they delete all their old social media, took him away from the website, got rid of as much as they could any reference to him, which that alone is a terrible way to handle something like that. So what happened was. Well, did they was, announce anything like he was terminated no. or he just disappeared? OK, he just disappeared. This is back in October -ish or something like that. And so essentially what happened was he was accused by a number of women outside of work, uh, supposedly, of um, of sexually harassing them. I mean, being aggressive with them, uh, things like that. So what happened next, was the public relations, remember, that's what they're known for is communication, public relations, all that stuff. The right. public relations, the way they handled it was awful. It was very much the typical Catholic institution of we have to protect the institution above all else. Did they not think? The entire Catholic community was not right. going to notice that their bodybuilder right. dude disappeared. Right. I mean, the right hand man of, of Barron. And so ultimately, they didn't come out and say anything until it was discovered what happened. It came out that there was a meeting back in October. Internal at, were on fire and the transcript got got leaked. And it's and it sounded like from w when I looked at what I saw was Bishop Barron seemed at best tone deaf, just co tone deaf to the, the seriousness of the accusations. And then when the story leaked out more, then they came out and attacked the messenger, attacked, you know. And so I they thought play, that was, it was seemed to me that we're on fire was saying we're the victim. Yes. In their first paragraph of their second press release about this, they basically in the first paragraph, they mentioned how members of the staff had been threatened and, and whatever, which I obviously if that happened, those people are awful who threatened them. But like you, what you've done there is you set the tone. You said we're the real victims, and so really the the reaction was just was just awful. I, I mean the way they they I, so I really my big criticism of them is the initial high oddness of the hiring of him and and others like him, and then how they handled after it was found out publicly that this had happened. Like the part of them actually terminating him, from what we know, sounds like that was probably handled uh, properly. Yeah, though, you know, in the the meetings that were released, I don't know if it was legal or not, there was the idea of the quotes from Bishop Barron, if they're legitimate, the alleged quote right. to Bishop Barron that, well, you know, we don't want to ruin Joey Glor's life. Yeah. You know, these are accusations and that kind of when a bishop right. is saying those kind of things post 2001, two, three, all right. the way up post McCarrick. Boy, that that really ticked off a lot of people. 